Okay, so today we're looking at replacing the hard drive on a HP 255G2 laptop. Uh, we had a few problems with this one, trying to find the exact model number of the machine. Um, we ended up going to support.hp.com where you can put either the serial number or the model number in which is on the uh, sticker on the underside of the machine and that actually came up and told us the model number. Now the reason why we are looking at replacing the hard drive, don't know whether you'll be able to hear this when I turn it on, but the hard drive actually makes a din and then obviously we get some um, some wording up on the screen as well so basically you get a crunching noise when you first turn the machine on um, and then you get smart hard disk error, the smart hard disk check has detected an in imminent failure to ensure no data loss please back up the content immediately and run the hard disk disk test in the system diagnostics. We don't need to run the hard disk test, you can tell by listening that the hard drive itself has failed. It sounds like a, a jammed head or the head's actually scraping across one of the platters in the drive. So um, turn it off and I'm going to show you how to open the machine up and replace the hard drive in the machine. So first thing that we need to do is to turn the machine over and then underneath here there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven screws there that need to be removed. As well as those eleven screws, we then also need to remove the memory cover, which is just one screw and then it lifts up out the way. Now we've already stripped this down once just to make sure that we uh, we knew where we were going with the video. Once you're underneath the machine here, there are another three screws, one, two, three, which have all already been removed by us. Uh, once you've got the screws removed, then you also need to disconnect the power button, which is this first connector here. The keyboard is on the back of the motherboard, which is a new design for me. And then also the trackpad connector needs um, removing as well so all three connectors just lift up so they just lift up and then pull the cable back out of the connector <clears throat> once those three cables have been removed um, once we've done that then we need to flip the machine over and then it's a case of taking this top lid off I use a, a, a case opening tool on these I um, don't know whether you can see that one, these are uh, Bojo prize tools, they're quite um, thick and sturdy these. So then literally we're just going to work along the edge of the machine, just prising up. And all we're doing is just prising the plastic clips apart. So we're just pushing along to the next clip where it gets tough and then just a little twist on the opening tool just prizes the clips apart. Uh, sounds far worse than it is. With all of the clips around the outside edge undone, then that whole top lid is just going to lift off. Now, um, one thing I will say when you're undoing those clips, if you've not done it before, is just to take your time. Um, because if you snap them, then you end up with um, bits of the case that won't close back down afterwards. So once we've done that, with the cables already undone we can lift the whole top lid off the laptop and you can see there that you've got the power cable here which runs to a power switch on the underside of the board uh, the track pack cable that goes to the main board and that's the keyboard lead just um, coming out the metal underneath um, I'm not a great fan of this design where the um, the keyboard is an integral part of the machine's case but it seems to be the way that most laptop designs are going now it just means that when you um, come with a, a faulty keyboard we end up replacing the top half of the machine rather than just the keyboard itself so if we just put the keyboard out the way 
Um, once we're in there, so we'll, we'll, we'll have a look at the inside of the machine now as best you can. Um, so we've got a cable from the motherboard that goes to some extra USB ports, obviously your hard drive, uh, DVD drive which is on a plug um, and then plugs in at the back here. Um, the jack port, the power jack port on these is one of the newer designs but it's actually cabled and plugs into the the motherboard so it's not a not a solder replacement on one of them. Anyway back to the hard drive replacement so the first thing that we've got to do is lift this clip up here and just remove that extension extender cable out the way. Once that's out the way there are three screws screwed into the hard drive caddy which need removing two and three once they're removed then it's a case of lifting the caddy up and the hard drives on a cable here which just unplugs out the back of a SATA drive and then on the drive itself around the outside edge there are four screws so then it's simply a case of if we take those four screws out three and the fourth that's the old hard drive out pop the new one into the caddy and then four screws back in Again, just be careful when screwing these back in, not to cross thread them. <coughs> so that's in, plug the cable back in, seat the drive, make sure it's seated correctly, uh, push the cable back in place, screw three screws back in, one, two, and three, extend the cable back in, so just be careful, make sure that you seat it properly and it goes in nice and square. With that back in place then we're putting the lid back on. What you've got to be careful of here is you put it back in that all the cables slide under the motherboard. Otherwise once you go back underneath you won't be able to get to them. Don't push the, don't clip the top lid all the way down. Flip it over and then hopefully in there you can see that you've got the uh, cable there, um, the keyboard cable there, and that's the trackpad cable there. So we'll just lift them up under the motherboard. Trackpad cable in again with these, just be careful that they go back in nice and square. You don't force them at all, otherwise you'll break the connector. They should just literally slide in without having to force them. Same with the keyboard connector. Pop that down, put the Wi-Fi antenna cable back in place. Uh, memory cover, we're just going to sit that back on just so that everything's covered. Okay, battery back in. And then fingers crossed, we're just checking that the machine switch is on, recognises the hard drive. So there we're ready now, this time it says boot device not found. 
let me adjust that for you, boot device not found, please install an operating system on your hard disk. So then it's simply a case of us putting the USB key in um, with our chosen operating system. Now this one um, came with Windows 8 installed and had been upgraded to Windows 10. USB key in, we'll do a control alt delete to reboot. Fingers crossed, going to pick the USB pen up, there we go, straight away. Pick the USB up, 64 bit. And then we're straight on with reinstalling the Windows operating system back onto the new and replaced hard drive. So that basically gave you an insight into how you open up a HP 255G2 laptop and replace the hard drive. Obviously we've got to go back through now, uh, reseat everything, fasten the case back down, um, take the memory cover off again, there's three screws under there that need to go back in, um, memory cover back on and then all the screws in the underside of the machine back in place. Don't over tighten them in case, because you'll start snapping the plastic lugs on the underside of this top lid and what have you. Um, once that's done, we give the laptop a good clean um, and it's ready to go back to the customer. Um, if you want to have a look at our website, it's www.northwestpcdoctors.co.uk. Thank you.